it seems to me that if we use the metaphor of a, of a healing river, and I kind of like that metaphor, uh, for restorative justice, then that river's got a lot of tributary streams. And our interest is not in a downstream kind of amalgam that's, you know, the muddy Fraser River so much as it is to follow those tributaries to their headwaters. What's the, what's the, the bedrock that gives it force and gives it motivation and guides it? Um, whether that tributary stream is criminology or victimology, whether it's the Judeo-Christian ethic, whether it's First Nations values and teachings, uh, and our hope is that we'd be sufficiently wise that we would gather up all those little tributary streams into kind of this healing river that's informed by many, many wiser people than ourselves, back as many generations as we can even imagine, and uh, that we bring to bear the collected wisdom of those peoples in the disparate times and places uh, who have tremendous things to say about what we need to bring to bear in the present. And those things keep coming down to the very, very simple kinds of terms that, that Phil, <laughs> Phil Gattensby or Harold Gattensby will use from, from the wisdom of their own teachings, or that Don Nathanson tries to put together into some kind of very powerful and academic uh, kind of structure that has deep meaning too comes down to what does it mean to love? What does it mean to sacrifice? What does it mean to give of yourself to another for their best good? What are those little acts of kindness? What does it mean to nurture a child? What does it mean to, to turn away from the impulse to, to punish or to judge or to, to do things that, that create a level of, of destruction? in that little soul uh, and to do something instead that's less about my impatience and far more about what that child really needs. If we could stop child sexual abuse, if we could stop child abuse of any kind, neglect and harsh, harsh physical punishments, we could empty out the prisons and stop an awful lot of victimization. That's where a lot of it begins. So this whole, this whole discussion, it seems to me, needs to go from the the kinds of things that, that, that Phil Gattensby raised uh, in his eloquent piece about, did you see me? Do you see the children? Do you see their needs? And, you know, Phil's weeping about that by the end of that little soliloquy, and so am I. Because I see those children, but I see them many years later as the victims and the offenders with layerings of shame and layerings of trauma and layerings of hurt. There's a, a chaplain who spoke at Kroonstad in South Africa at an international gathering of prison chaplains. And uh, his name is Adria Koenig. And he said, uh, if hope were not, heart would die. And so, so much of this is about giving people hope that things will change, their circumstances will change. And hope is a deeply, deeply spiritual thing. If there's something about our processes or something about our relationships or the way we interact with people that creates hope, then that's deeply spiritual work. Do I have joy in being part of that? It's what I've always dreamed about. Yeah. That's the heart of it for me. I don't want to see hearts die. Whether, whether it's an offender in an institution who's lost hope and has become hopeless, or whether it's someone who's just, just gotten tired of the struggle to, to heal, to move on about the violation of sexual integrity or the layerings of childhood sexual abuse or whatever it might be. The loss of a child. How do you deal with the murder of a child? You know, just the notion they could become so hopeless that life has no more meaning for them is the most tragic picture I can imagine. So if we can do anything in that context to enable them or to help them find a way, I don't know. For me, it's just a question of you, you just walk alongside people. And it's those little acts of kindness that Hale Gattensby talks about that begin to support people and have them feeling like, I'm loved here, I'm safe here, I'm cared for here. Mm -hmm.